Is your boxer driving you absolutely crazy because it will not stop barking? Well, today's the video for you. Welcome back to the Fenrir Boxer Show. My name's Joe and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirK9Leaders.com. We are dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the wonderful, beautiful boxer and then how to become a high level canine leader so you can raise your very own boxer. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. We have two dedicated videos coming here every single week, so you do not want to miss out. When you walk in from home, what is the reaction you are getting from your boxer? Is it barking and then barking a bit more and then maybe barking even a little bit more? Will it not stop barking? This is a really, really frustrating thing and it's something that you want to train your dog to stop doing as soon as possible. So today we're going to be tuning in to a webinar that the CEO and founder of FenrirK9Eaters.com, Will, has recorded all about how to stop your dog barking. So you can learn some really useful tips from this. Over to you, Will. So welcome back to another quick breakdown webinar of one of the most, possibly the most common behavior problem that owners will face with their dogs. And as a canine behaviorist, this is something that I get requests for help with every single day. And that is around excessive barking. So in this webinar, we're going to quickly break down the most common strategies that I utilize to extremely high levels of success when implementing behavior modification programs to be able to very quickly, and or at least as quickly as possible, Possible, address excessive barking and not just put a plaster on the issue but get to the root cause and actually fix the problem so if you're going to be working as a professional role and want to be able to help your clients with this issue or maybe you yourself are just looking to become a high level canine leader for your relationship with your own dog then this is exactly what you're going to be looking for in terms of specifics for excessive barking now, to start off with, we have to understand that excessive barking and most common problem behaviours have a root cause. And the problem is that a lot of people will try and simply put a plaster on the behaviour. It's like having a stone in your shoe and going to the doctor and getting them to prescribe you some morphine for the pain of a stone in the shoe. You just actually want to take the shoe off and get the stone out. And that's what we're trying to do here. We need to find out what the root cause of the problem behaviour is and then address it at the the root cause. Now, when it comes to excessive barking, it tends to fall into two categories. And what we like about our procedure and the step-by-step -step process that we go through in terms of implementing a, an intervention or a strategy to be able to fix excessive barking is that inherently it will fix the problem regardless of where that root cause is coming from. So we're going to dive into it. And the first thing that we must address is around, are we giving our dogs enough mental and physical exercise? Now, now, the simple answer is often the most effective answer, but sometimes it's difficult for an owner to wrap their head around the concept that, unfortunately, you need to wake up an hour earlier and go and do some more exercise with your dog. You need to find time in the day to do some more obedience and work with your dog to be able to tire their minds, especially if they've gone out and bought a higher energy working dog that has those higher levels of drive. One of the most common causes of excessive barking is simply nothing more than a buildup of pent-up frustration in terms of lack of a productive outlet for physical energy requirements or mental stimulation requirements. That frustration builds up, they get bored, they get frustrated and out it comes in excessive barking. Very common with working breeds in particular. So what we always start with is simply by drastically increasing the amount of exercise that they're doing with their dogs. Now again, very easy answer, but not necessarily as easy to implement, especially if you're coming at this from more of a professional level of being able to have that finesse and being able to have that conversation with an owner to let them know that you simply need to put more effort in. It's nothing to do with the dog. The dog's not broken and there's nothing that we can come in and do uh, as an easy fix for you to fix this problem. You just need to put more effort in. So again, we need to go through that process gently help the owner to see that for themselves and to understand it more from a why perspective which then informs the what we need to do much more easily so always always start with simply adding in more physical more mental stimulation and you might have solved the problem straight away
Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to interrupt and let you know about our boot camp program if you've never heard of it before. It's the program that as a canine behaviorist, I use every single day with all of the clients and all of the bad behavior cases that I work with to high levels of success. It is focused on teaching you how to become a high level canine leader that is able to restructure the relationship with your dog so that they see you as that leader and they know to look up to you for guidance and direction. When we achieve that, we can then finally address those bad behavior problems and get to the point of having the perfect canine companion that you've always dreamed of. So if you want more information about our bootcamp program, the link will be down in the description box below. But until then, let's get back to the video you were just watching. Now, if that doesn't solve the problem, and when it comes to excessive barking, it then will fall into one category. If we know that our dogs are getting enough mental and physical exercise every single day, and they're still displaying excessive barking tendencies, it is either a learnt behaviour, and the dog has learnt that through displaying this behaviour, it gets them the desired outcome. We have inadvertently taught them that that is what they need to do. Now, again, we're going to uh, be able to correct that issue very easily moving forward. That's not a problem. The other one is simply we might be more of a breed related issue and it's something that the dog does naturally. Looking at certain shepherd breeds for example or guardian breeds it's very innate for them to want to bark a lot. Now also what we need to do so if we need to correct obnoxious learnt behaviours we might need to teach the dog more appropriate ways to utilize their barking and that's what this next process does so we've started off with exercise and that's important no matter what even if the exercise isn't the fix adding exercise will always help now before we can move into what is now more of a formal behavior intervention strategy in terms of being able to address the root cause of the problem and be able to really fix the behavior we cannot do that unless the the relationship with the dog and the owner is restructured unless the owner whether that's you and you're trying to become a high level canine leader yourself or maybe you are interested in working in this professionally and you need to be able to help the owner of the dog be able to see this and that is that they themselves must become high level canine leaders themselves restructure the relationship with their dog to then be able to much more efficiently communicate a what we do want and b what we don't want now we can't jump to those bits of teaching them what we do want and what we don't want if we don't have that excellent relationship so we start with exercise we then move on to restructuring the relationship here at Fenrir we use our canine boot camp process to be able to really quickly and efficiently address that the reason that that has been so effective with so many people is because it is a structured one month program for the owners to go through with their dogs to be able to restructure that relationship and to put in rules expectations and boundaries and to be able to let the dog give over ownership to looking to the owner for guidance and direction and it's, it, it is that process, but what's beautiful about it is inherently throughout that process, we're also teaching our owners how to become high level canine leaders. We're teaching them the theories and the concepts and the ideas that means not only when they go through that boot camp to fix one problem, they come out the other end as better leaders themselves, which then means that they can address any other problems themselves. And then they don't need us again as a canine behaviorist, which if you want to do your job right, is the right way of going about it. We're not simply putting plasters on problems so that we can come back and put a plaster on another problem we get to the root cause we help our owners become high level canine leaders and then they don't need us again it might seem counterintuitive but i promise you you'll have a lot of success so we must restructure the relationship teach our owners to become high level canine leaders themselves restructure that relationship have the dog look up to us for guidance and direction or up to the owner for guidance and direction once we get to that stage and again the boot camp can help you address that if that's what you need help with then we can move on to the the approach of actually fixing excessive barking so exercise restructure the relationship and now we get to move on to what most people want to dive to straight away but this area will not work if we aren't providing adequate exercise and we don't have a good relationship with our dogs first so now we get to move on to the meat and bones of what everybody wants when they're thinking about excessive barking and that is correcting the behavior now so when we go through correcting the dog's behavior in terms of excessive barking the vast majority of the time it will be alert behavior dog has learned i want attention you're busy so bark 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 gets us to give them attention 
dog wants to then repeat it and it becomes a self-rewarding behavior that's why it is a learnt behavior now a really good analogy of this is uh, a very common problem of excessive barking around the postman it's almost so common that it's almost like cliche now that dogs don't like postmans and the cartoons and all the things around that but it stems from a learnt behaviour and a, a behaviour that is self-rewarding to the dog. So take, for example, the postman is coming to the door, dog is behind the door, bark, 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 especially guard dogs that want that person to go away. They're doing their job. Go away. I don't want you here. I am here. This is my house. This is all in bark, bark, bark. Postman comes, post the letters, turns away and goes. Now the dog has zero concept that that's a postman and that's his job. All the dog knows is postman's come, I have barked, desired outcome happens with postman leaving. Next time postman comes, they repeat that behavior and it gets the desired outcome again. And then it becomes a self-taught behavior and a self-rewarding behavior. And that will just get more and more excessive as time goes on. And then obviously it spills out into other areas. It's very common. And being able to kind of unpick that um, does require a little bit of finesse. That's not necessarily what we're talking about here. We're talking about more generic excessive barking, but you need to understand the concept that it will most likely come from a place of it being a learnt behavior where we have accidentally, either accidentally ourselves taught them that that's acceptable or we've inadvertently allowed that to be the case and now we simply need to go through unpicking that a little bit like i say exercise we structure the relationship makes this bit really easy if you want to jump to this bit you can try it can work but it will be much more difficult to achieve the fast um actions and the fast outcomes that we're able to achieve if you put that effort into these places first. So what we do is we go through our very simple process of correct, redirect, reinforce. Sounds very simple. The reason that we want to restructure the relationship as well is that, yes, we are going to have to use a correction-based approach to be able to fix excessive barking. Now, what that doesn't mean is that we're going to beat our dogs, we're going to hurt our dogs. What it means is that as a good leader, we're not going to ignore bad behavior. Good leaders don't ignore bad behaviors. They address the behaviors. They address them calmly, efficiently, with good timing, and they get to the point and then they move on. They don't dwell, but they address it and they move on. They address it fairly, but firmly with extreme rules, boundaries and expectations. That is what a good leader does, even more so in the dog world. And that's what we need to do. Now, yes, you can go down the line of physical corrections and it will work. Here at Fenrir, we do sometimes utilize physical corrections. What we like to use them for is that if the dog is going to end up in a shelter, and if the dog ends up in a shelter, then there's a high chance that they're going to get put down. If it's going to save that dog's life, then we will utilize physical corrections if need be. And that can work in this situation. But what we like to do, if that's not the case, is to be able to simply use a verbal correction. Now, this takes us back to restructuring the relationship. If we restructure that relationship, and put a lot of effort into doing that, then a verbal correction will carry far more weight and will be far more effective, which then means we don't have to go down the line of utilizing physical corrections, which might then require slip leads to choke chains, to prong collars, those kind of things. They will achieve the desired outcome that we're looking for, but we like to use the minimal amount of correction to get the job done. If you want to use the minimum amount of correction, put the effort into exercise and restructuring the relationship. That allows you to become a better leader, which means that your low-end corrections carry far more weight and are far more effective. If your verbal corrections don't work, it's a classic telltale sign that the dog doesn't respect your authority or your leadership. You need to take a step back and be able to readdress that. So correct, redirect, reinforce. What does that look like with excessive barking? Dog barks, we correct it with verbal correction as a good leader, chest up, shoulders back, stern, deep, good vocal inflection. I like to use an at app, so that might look like, sorry if this comes across loud on the mic, be careful if you've got headphones on, but that might be a very simple ah, or a very stern, no. The second that barking is ah, about to go ah, ah, no. Again, we make it very clear what you're doing is not acceptable. Now, if that doesn't work, 
and we've got a case where I am going to send this dog to a shelter if I can't fix this right now. I've been in that place many times of helping people in that exact situation. Then I might utilize a tool like a prong collar and that vocal inflection. It might be an ah, ah, no and a snap on the prong collar to really be able to help them. Again, I know a lot of the positive only people don't like that principle, but I specialize in what we call death row cases where this dog is going to get put down if we do not address this right now. So utilizing a tool like that can very much save that dog's life and it does work now again i don't want you to be lazy and jump straight to that by skipping the exercise and the restructuring of the relationship do that thing first and then hopefully your vocal inflection and verbal correction will work fine so you've corrected the behavior the second the barking goes time in instantly then what we need to do is we can't just tell them off and then not tell them what it is that we do want from them it's yin and yang that's why we call it balanced training we need to let them know what we do want and we need to let them know what we don't want so we've utilized our correction to let them know what we don't want now i want you to go into a sit stay and wait quiet calm good manners so ah sit stay and we might wait for one second. And what we're looking at teaching the dog is that if you want something, you get that through being calm, quiet, well-mannered. So sit, stay, wait. Yes, good boy, good. And we reinforce, correct, redirect, reinforce. That one second can then become three seconds of waiting quietly with good manners, then five seconds, then 10 seconds, and then 20 seconds. If you put exercise in, if you restructure the relationship, if you are good, calm, and consistent with correcting that behavior every time and then redirecting and reinforcing the desired behavior, the inappropriate behavior will decrease, the desired behavior will increase, and over time, and very quickly, if you implement this properly, you will have a dog that will stop excessively barking and will start to demonstrate calm, relaxed behaviors because they are seeking the desired outcome, which is looking up to you for guidance and direction because you restructured the relationship and doing what it is that you want from them. And now we have that good relationship, we can clearly communicate that through correct, redirect to the desired behavior, reinforce. Now, what we also can do when it comes to excessive barking is that we're correcting the bad behavior and redirecting them to the desired behavior, which is calm, good manners. What we can do and what so many people make the mistake of the doing this is I guarantee you might think that you've got the most annoying dog in the world with excessive barking behaviors. That will still probably be a small percentage of the time of that dog's day-to-day -day activity as him actually displaying that behavior. There'll be lots of opportunities where your dog is being calm, quiet, and well-mannered. And we're gonna skip correct redirect because they're already there. We're gonna be conscious and we're going to be proactive and preemptive and go and reinforce those behaviors so not only are we correcting the bad behaviors and redirecting it when the bad behaviors happen but we're also going to also on top of that reinforce when the good behaviors are there anyway so if the dog's lying down and being quiet rather than us using that as a time to be oh finally the dog's not being a pain i'm going to go and do this thing you're going to go and say thank you dog good boy yes here's a treat and again over time undesirable behavior decreases, desirable behavior increases. As the undesirable behavior decreases, you have to use less and less and less corrections. And then we can get to a point where we do live positive only and reinforcement only. We can only get there through a balanced approach of leadership, and then firm rules, boundaries, and expectations. So get out there, start implementing those processes, and I promise you, if you do, you will be able to address excessive barking with incredibly high levels of success. It's just, the, the question ultimately is, are you willing to put in the work? Because nothing is easy. You got this problem because you didn't put the work in originally, or your client didn't put the work in originally. So we need to be able to get them to understand that without upsetting them. We don't have to go in and be nasty or horrible about that, but we need to make them clearly understand that and then be able to move forward to get to that point of a wonderful relationship with their dogs where they're happy their dogs are happy and ultimately we're keeping them out of shelters and not being put down so go put the work in and i promise you you'll have a lot of success so there it is guys some really useful training tips that you're going to be able to take away straight away and start putting into practice with your boxer that will not stop barking and then you'll be able to have the outcome and that perfect boxer that you would love I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, get involved in the comments down below. Let us know how you're getting on with training your boxer as we would love to hear all about it. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. Hit that like button on this video and I can't wait to see you in the next episode of the Fenrir Boxer Show.